Daniel Jacobs, he's a good fighter. I understand he's serious for me. This is battle. This is not game. This is fight. Good evening, boxing fans. Welcome to another episode of Boxing Rampage, episode 17. Still a minor. <laughs> uh, Still on double digits. <laughs> yes, I am your host, JC, accompanied by... Flaco right? And very, we're very gonna good. bring you another great episode today. Today's topics will include the Triple G and Danny Jacobs fight coming up this weekend. We'll also include the undercards in there and obviously the fights that are... Just fight. just passed this weekend with Andrade and um, Cole K, but um, yeah, it's a crazy fight, man. What can I say? Um, it was a split decision for uh, Andrade. Andrade is now the WBA regular champion. Uh, Eris Landi Lara being the WBA super champion, and uh, now Andrade is the mandatory for Lara, basically. So um, the way I saw this fight, I didn't see Andrade being. On his A game, he's. It was like he was in focus, or he was trying to. I'm not sure if he was trying to get KO Koke, or, or he was trying to just make sure he will win the fight convincingly and not try to um, get caught by a punch. I, I honestly, I don't understand what was going through his head, but it was. It isn't. It was not the actual Andrade that um, we are used to seeing on a, in his previous fight. This this fight. You might think that would give you more of an idea who he is. Now it gave us more doubts. Now we are thinking, can he really beat the number one, uh, 144 pounder junior uh, junior middleweight um, uh, champ? But honestly, I don't know right now. Now he le he just left questions in my in, in my head. So he didn't he didn't look that uh, great that he like he usually does um he got the decision you know split decision one of the judges had it for coke and um basically he was either trying to make sure like a uh, fight like um Thurman did in his last fight make sure he will win the rounds and uh do enough just to win the rounds or he was just trying to ko coke to make sure he'll get the victory via KO and the KO didn't come. It was either one of those things, but like I said, he didn't look sharp at all. It could have been jet lag, you know, the fight was in the UK, but um, uh, I was a little bit disappointed, but I, not as much of disappointment uh, with the uh, Yoski um, Gamboa fight. What's going on, HBO, Golden Boy, with your boy over here, uh, Gamboa, my man. This guy put me to sleep. He knocks me out. This guy was boring. Like, he, he was not trying to engage. I don't know what's going on with Gamboa. I mean, Gamboa had never been, like, that explosive fighter. I mean, at the beginning, maybe, yeah. But um, I don't know, man. Uh, it was just bad. People was booing. Um, I don't know, man. I, I don't know what... G G well, yeah, Gamboa should have just throw more punches, be more active, put himself first. And even when he tried in the last round, he got dropped. Um, René Alvarado catch him with, with a flash knockdown on the, on the 12th. But it was a real boring fight. Uh, Gamboa got the unanimous decision. But um, I don't know. For me, G Gamboa haven't looked that impressive for like three years now, maybe almost four. I felt like the... Darlis Perez uh, uh, fight, he was um, he was gifted. I actually felt that Perez did enough to win that fight. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think maybe the Salido fight was, like, the best fight for Gamboa. And then after that, what's next for him? Maybe put him against High Tech, Lomachenko? Uh, that's the only idea that Golden uh, that I could think right now. Probably Golden Boy sign him to, to feed him to uh, Lomachenko. They're they're okay with being the B side and, and, and getting the the short end of the cake and just you know one, once he loses to Lomachenko just uh, get rid of him because um, yeah I honestly don't see it you know you could probably want to blame it on on the inactivity et cetera et cetera but then um, uh, this guy uh, Gamboa didn't look good at all he just knocked me out and talking about knockout. 
we are talk we are gonna move on to the main event for that card. Um Lemieux versus uh Stevens. The knockout of the year for, for um in, in my um opinion. And I don't know. Um I know J C right here p- picked uh uh Lemieux and in, in my head like I thought Lemieux would have been I, I just took uh, Steven to, to go against him because, you know, we've been doing that lately. But, um, like, I, I, at a point, I, I thought that uh, maybe Steven would have catch up to Lemieux, but uh, he didn't. No, um, Lemieux, he, he was – he didn't look that impressive. He was uh, a bit heavy. He was, like, 17 pounds above weight limit on fight night, that is. And Stevens supposedly was only um, 10 pounds. So he had uh, 7 pounds above um, Stevens. So basically, it, it was a really good fight. This, this fight c- uh, completely woke me up. And um, the first round, uh, Stevens just stood there with his hard guard. He, he was unloading, but Lemieux was just going at it. He was dropping haymakers, bomb after bombs. And um, yeah, he just put it up and... and Stevens was was being was being there to be hit, and that's one thing that I I was like maybe uh, Lemieux will punch himself out. But then if you saw the uh, Rosado fight that I went to the Barclays a couple years back with my boy uh, Brian and John, and we catch that fight there, I remember this guy not gassing at all. This guy when uh, what was it Rosado? He went ten rounds, uh, and he didn't gas out. He knocked out, he, he uh, TKO was out in the 10 round. So, you know, this guy managed to, to get his power all, all the way over, um, to the 10th round. Um, Hassam and Dam, he, he, he dropped them like five times. I mean, not, can't give him that much credit because Peter Quillen did about the same, but the a, a guy keep keep his power and uh, his stamina. So um, he doesn't look in the best of the shape, you know. He, it seems like he have a bit of a trouble making weight um, because we have seen it in the past. Uh, uh, one of his fight was canceled for him not making weight, and there's rumors that he does uh, have problem making weight. Ballooning up 17 pounds overnight shows that uh, that he had problem making weight. But um, overall, exciting fight. Uh, the knockout came in the third round at one, uh, one minute 59 seconds of the third round, and uh, it was similar to a Pacquiao Marquez kind of thing. I, 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 at a point, I was worried about Stevens. My man Curtis was just laying down sleeping. Um, so yeah, guys, it was uh, crazy. But um, JC got, came back here from the bathroom, and, <laughs> and now we're going to move on to uh, the 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 upcoming event: Triple G versus uh, Jacobs, and. Um, and it's on the car, which we are really excited. We are uh, headed to New York soon to, to catch this, this fight live. I'm a true uh, Triple G fan. And, um, yeah, we're going to break down this fight. Um, the way I see both fights, I mean, Triple G, we've seen enough of him to the, to see exactly where he is. I mean, he Triple G is a, a guy that fights consistently. I mean, from what I've seen, he fights at least three times a year. Um haven't really seen him not sharp. There's things that I've always seen from him, but he's never showed any wear and tear, such as his defense. Um, he gets hit a lot, but then again, the guy's never been knocked down. He doesn't show like he's flustered by people's shots. So, and he even says himself, like he he lightly touched me when he gets hit with monster shots. Like I don't, I, I don't see how that's possible. This guy can get hit with a sledgehammer. We're like, oh, he, he nicked me with a razor. <laughs> it's like okay, but um, Triple G, there's. Based on the eye test, nothing looks off with him. The only thing I would see is that the defense uh, could be better, but he cuts off the ring. He has monstrous power. Um, he looks invincible at this at this point in time, so I don't see anything wrong. Um, with the fight this weekend, I mean, he's fought people like him, but uh, uh, like Danny Jacobs, but Danny Jacobs presents something else. I think what will come out is that Danny Jacobs is the more complete fighter, the more complete boxer. I mean... Um, I wouldn't take it lightly, that's for sure. I don't think he's fighting a, a common opponent. I mean, Danny Jacobs has power, has speed, has footwork, works angles. Uh, he's training with Virgil Hunter. The only thing, obviously, is uh, his one weakness is his chin. Um, 
which showed that on the Sergey Moore fight, Sergio Moore, excuse me, fight. So, um, pro, pro, pro my match. thing is a how he handles Triple G's power, and B, I, I this is how I see it. There's no way. There's no way. 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 Danny Jacobs can go with the game plan to knock down Triple G. Just can't. Because if you go with that game plan, you're going to get frustrated and you're going to lose. Honestly, if, if if I were Danny Jacobs, I would find any way possible to just get through 12 rounds. I don't care if he has to pedal, back pedal, and not to the point of not engaging, but obviously he can't run. He has to pretty much, because you have to think if, if, if Triple G catches you in a corner, he's going to either throw the jab, he's going to throw a hook to your body. He has to find a way to pretty much move around that, and that's that's harder. It's harder to say than to actually do because many people have tried to do that, but they haven't been successful. But with that, he has to capitalize on the fact of of defense and make Triple G uh, respect his power. But even with a guy like Triple G, like like I said, I haven't seen a guy yet that's able to say, "Hey, I uh, respect my power." He's able to walk through him. So very difficult to fight a guy like him. But, yeah, the only game plan, the only way I could see Danny Jacobs winning is he fights for 12 rounds because he's not going to knock him down. And he finds a way even to say, I, I got to the 12th round, and I don't know how that would look. I mean, what I am seeing more and more from people that fight him, the Triple D, is that when he first started his KO streak, fighters wouldn't even make it to the fourth round. Now I'm seeing fighters make it to the fifth, sixth, even with, like, a guy like, like, um, uh, 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 geez, I was scared. I Kel see Brook. his face. Kel Brook. He made it to the fifth, sixth, which I think that's a lot for a guy that, that's coming up in weight. Like, I mean, if a, he fights a guy like and a guy like Jacobs to where if they can weather the storm to make it all the way even to the ninth or tenth, and I've never seen – I mean, there have been fights, but I've never seen Triple G make it past to, like, the tenth round. I don't know how that would look. So, um I just that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't see anything wrong with Triple G. He he's he's gonna come in the same way he comes. He's a perfect fight. The real question here is how will Danny Jacobs perform? How do you, how do you see that then? Well, for me, this is a fight um, that we either Triple G is gonna be exposed, and which a lot of people believe that you know Triple G is not who who we think he is, and, or Triple G is gonna show that he is what we think he is. He's a, a top of the line boxer. He's an elite boxer. Um, so ba basically, uh, if we like, we think about Triple G, and a lot of people said that, oh, he he let himself hit hit. Uh, I'm sorry, he let his opponent hit him, so he it, he can make the the fight more uh, interesting. In which I I do not agree with. I I think that he just opened himself up so he could counter. And I seen it. If you seen like the uh, Ma Martin Murray fight, which was uh, that was that was probably the toughest fight he had. Yeah, because that, that yeah. fight was uh, Martin that Murray was, was big. It was and, what, seven, um, eight rounds or yeah, something a, like a that? Yeah, a guy that never been down. He was um, way bigger than him, too. Yeah. It, it, went, it actually went to 11 rounds. So, um, uh, it, it, I remember that uh, that Murray was against the rope. A lot of holding in that fight. Yeah, he was against the rope. And just, I saw Triple G just put his defense down. And uh, Murray just started th uh, landing shots. And then that's when he came up with that hook and... And hurt him at that point, but uh, basically, I, I just believe that he's w once he gets into a, 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 a spot where he's un uncomfortable, because he he got to get into a position, just like Danny Garcia gets into a position to 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 land those heavy punches, because these guys that throw these bombs, they don't they don't just generate them in, from the air. They they got to the hips. They they got to set set themselves in a certain position where they could generate this power. So if he's not, he's not in that position where he could generate that power to hurt you, what he does is he's open up so you could start hitting him. And he only does it when he could take your power. Um, so he, he puts himself in that position and basically... Yeah, but this, this guy, is, that's the thing. That's what I'm trying to see how he takes it. Like, I know that, well, that uh, with, 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 Danny with, Jacobs has power, with, bro. With, with, with Jacobs, what I believe he's going to do is he's going to take the same approach that he did with Lemieux. He's going to come in and just jab his, his heart off and, and, and open up those, those spots where... Where he could hurt uh, um, uh, Jacob. So basically, the way I see this fight is, um, it could either go in a early knockout for for G Triple G, where Triple G just hurt him early and finish him, because Triple G does have the killing instinct. 
automatically. And 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 that's one thing I, I like. I, I know this just got nothing to do with the fight, but when people talk about Canelo versus Triple G, Canelo doesn't have that killer instinct. Can- Canelo is is like guys like um, like uh, uh, I'm sorry, Thurman. That that are guys that once they do enough to win, they just take off rounds and and, and just do it enough to win. Uh, Triple G is a guy. He's a killer. This guy comes and when he sees that you hurt, he'll keep pounding you until they either stop the fight or he just take you out. And Triple G's not a, a, a one KO knockout guy like probably like Danny Garcia who just comes swinging from 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 these crazy angles and catch you with that one punch and, and just lay you down. Triple G's a guy that that breaks you, break break you systematically. And yeah. Exactly. So Danny Gar- uh, Danny Jacobs have. Uh, history of, of, of being hurt and being hurt by guys that that doesn't have um, punching power like Mora. So think about a guy who is more technical sound than the, his, his previous opponents and now, now just uh, put down the line and just put um, power in, in, into those guys. So basically what I'm trying to say is Mora was able to catch him with that punch because Mora is, is a slick fighter. He's like a, a, a Herrera. He's, he's a real slick fighter and is able to like land these these awkward punches. He kind of reminds me of a moderation. Exactly. Type. And yeah, and, and and that's a great example. They, they they are awkward fighters, and they will catch you with these awkward punches, and just easily could, could catch you. Uh, yeah, uh, it's just an angle. It's a bad it, angle. Yeah, call it, it, exactly. It, it, it's not like conventional. Not yeah, conventional. exactly. Like like if you say like the the Porter versus Broner fight, well, yeah. Broner just came in and, and catch Porter with this punch, and it's not a punch that really hurts you, but. Think Surprise. about you weren't prepared for it. Exactly. Think about Triple G hitting Jacobs with, with a punch like that. You put him to sleep. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, this fight either is gonna be an early knockout, probably like on the I think first, six, seven. For, first or second round, or it, it, like you said, it, it could go either to the eighth round. Yeah. If he it that's what I'm saying. If he finds a way, fast, that's what I'm saying. He ha- he can go in there, Danny Jacobs, and run for twelve rounds because he's he's gonna find a way to attack yeah, him. Yeah, he has to he has, guy, he has he has to engage with him somehow. This 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 guy is a guy. Triple G is a guy that could cut the ring like a mother effer. Like this guy could cut the ring. Like he's right now. I don't think the best thing to do if I were Danny Jacobs, I'd find a way to to jab his way, but then if, if possible, try to. I mean, it's really hard, but I wouldn't run. I basically wouldn't run. I try to use as much angles and pivot as much as possible. Because you got to think, if he's able to pivot on Triple G, and the thing is the range. If Triple G is, is at the range to where you're at the end of his punches, then it's going to be hard to to take that t- type of power. But if he's able to smother his punches, hold, I'd hold like hell, jab on the break, just jab again, and then pivot as much as possible and stay basically try to find a way to stay in between his punches. Cause if you start running, you're going to be on the outside of his punches and that's what triple G has power right at the outside of the range. So if I were him, I'd stay on the inside and then stay somewhere out of the range of the full brunt of his punches, even to where he has to punch you grab. It's going to be a fight. It's going to, I would even say it'd be an awkward fight. It's where it's just going to be a lot of grabbing. If, if I were Danny Jacobs, I'd grab till hell. And then obviously later towards the fight, if it's pot, and I don't think Triple G is going to gas out. But if it does, then obviously just his best bet, Jacobs, is basically break his knockout streak <laughs> by not having him knock him out. But even if he loses, it's going to be, you know. But a guy like Triple G, I fear that we are so used to seeing him win by knockout that if he doesn't get a knockout, they may just give it to Jacobs, even if he loses the fight. Because it's just, we're so, we're so drunk with that power that if we don't see it, we just see it as, oh, he, he lost the fight. So No, nah, but it, the thing is that it probably, if you don't knock him out, I'll, I'll pro- I could see easily Jacobs going down. Yeah, it's uh, possible. Three or four times. And, and that itself will give Triple G the fight unless he just knock him four times in one round. You gotta, but, you gotta be smart. That's what I'm saying. I think a lot of holding is gonna come. Usually when you fight a power puncher like that, you, you're gonna have to hold a lot. And but work but that, that's the thing about Triple G. Like, he'll it, 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 when the holding, he always... He always put in some punches to the body or catch you on the way out, and and, and that's and that's the thing that you gotta probably look at it. It basically depends on what version of, of Jacobs. If Jacobs comes real like real fast, like he walked into the Peter Quinlan fight, I could see him sw- uh, trying to land one, one of those wild. That's punches. the wrong idea, bro. Yeah, w- yeah. one of those wild punches and, and, and get clipped early. And if you decide to box, 
And that's why I, I, I said it could either go real quick, depends on how uh, Jacob is trying, is trying to come inside of his fight, or it could be an uh, eight-round fight where, you know, Jacob decided to box, and then Triple G got to find a way to get inside it and, and cut the distance. And, that's and what I'm saying. As, as, long, so as me, long as he's not at the end of his punches, he'll be okay. For he me, it's, it's, it's too, it, it's too, it's too, um, it's too virgin. Either it's going to go early where J Jacob get caught early in the round trying to uh, impose his power, or he could run to be late if Jake could just come trying to box. Because uh, he's way more athletic than, than Triple G and, and any of Triple G opponent. So, I mean, I, the only guy is uh, Willie Monroe, I think. Willie Monroe, mm, Willie Monroe had no power. <laughs> yeah, so. but, but he's really athletic. Yeah, he was really. I think the best thing he had was being on the inside. But the thing yeah. is, I honestly believe Triple G's power comes from out of the range. Once he fully extends his arm, especially with those hooks is, is where he gets you. So, And you have to think, if you're... If you're Triple G and you're used to cutting people down the ring, you're cutting the ring. You're, all those punches, when you cut the ring off, are at the end of your punches. So you're, you're basically catching people as they're moving. So And a lot of Triple G knockdowns are like that. Pretty much you, you see people moving on the outside, it catches them, and then they're gone. That's what I'm saying. I truly believe that, that, that Jacobs has to find a way to stay on the inside or mid-range but not run. Pivot, turn, turn, turn. But don't don't run because as soon as he runs, he catches on one of the end of those punches. He knows he's gonna land. Let's say you, you catch that leather and it's, it's over. So, um, so what what was your prediction for that fight? Uh, it's tough, man. It's tough. Um, I'm gonna go against the grain because I know you'll pick Triple G. I'm gonna pick. I'll pick Danny Jacobs and um, I'll I'll, I'll pick a, I'll, I'll pick another Danny. <laughs> why, why, why you do this to yourself? I, I already kicked your ass with Paulie Malinaji. Wait, Danny Garcia oh, Jesus. Ass, and then you I'm, I'm going to have to start keeping tabs over here. You're going to come again. And, <laughs> and, 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 and have, so how you see uh, Danny Jacob um, winning this fight? That's, uh, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm not saying go either way. I'm just picking to pick outside of it. But, yeah, that's pretty much like I said. Decision? Um, yeah, he's he's not gonna knock down Triple G. Hell All right, no. So, so you got Danny yeah. The Jacob's decision it, it'll be it'll 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 be a decision. I don't know what kind of decision, you but I think a decision. Right now if you want to. You said what? <laughs> you could your crow right now if you want to. <laughs> oh, <Jesus. laughs> so basically, I, the way I see it, and and just to give credit to everything that Danny Jacobs had put in together, you know, wor working with uh, adding Virgil Hunter, uh, adding. Uh, Chris Algieri to his got, camp. Got Andre Ward giving him advice, man. That, that, that guy. That guy. I, 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 I'll say, and I'll, I'll be nice. I won't say a KO. I'll say eight-round stoppage. TKO for uh, Triple hey, G. Throwing the towel or something, Virgil Hunter. Yeah. Or, something. Or, uh, or his trainer. So let's go to the undercard. Um, the undercards include uh, uh, Roman Chocolatico Gonzalez. Versus the, um, the, 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 I, these guys. I, yeah, I... He's he's not even from Japan, bro. This guy's he's from Thailand. From Thailand? Oh. He's uh. I don't know. For I me, apologize. I'm, sorry, guys, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try, guys. His name is. <clears throat> his name is Sir. Uh, I'm sorry. No. Uh, Wis Wisak Zil Wangek. He has a. If I, I truly apologize to all the people from Thailand. Um, he has a record of 41 and four, two knockouts, uh, two losses by KO and 38 knockouts. Um, his losses are to um, Carlos Cuadras back in 2014. Um, champion for the WBC. Which that would be the, the opponent he has to fight. And obviously losses early in his career were unknown opponents um, from Japan and, the Phil and excuse me, in Thailand. Um, they say this is mandatory, but... I don't. I don't see it going anywhere. I honestly see he has experience this fight. I'm not saying he doesn't. He's a very experienced fighter, but I honestly see it going to Gonzalez winning. Um, as far as I honestly believe, they're just trying to make the the fight again with Carlos Cuadras. Uh, so the Carlos Cuadras fight, I see it going the same way against David Carmona. Who David Carmona is uh, has a record of 23 and five, um, one loss, eight KOs. Um, he's a fighter from Mexico, so. The Carlos Cuadra fight, he's made to look good against Carmona. I see him winning by uh, KO, possibly. And then as far as the um, the uh, Gonzalez fight, I see him winning probably by decision. Because like I'm saying, he's fighting a veteran in there, a very experienced fighter. So I just see this fight as being made to, to build them up to fight each other once again. Because as you guys well know, the Gonzalez fight versus Cuadra's fight was very controversial because Carlos Cuadra, I don't know where he got that energy from. Um... 
I don't know if the acne on his back is any clue to what he does, but I don't, I don't know, know, man. They got a bottle touch. This guy, man, this guy had acne. Pissing that was, cup. <laughs> what do they put in that in that beef over there in Mexico? I don't know. I don't know. But uh, you 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 forgot the the one of the best fight of the night was it? It's Andy Lee. But um, I'm gonna touch up on um. Yeah, I I mean I I can't I, I can't wait to 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 be up with my Irish people up in the Madison Square Garden over there cheering for Andy Lee. Uh, you know he's gonna get that that KO. You're gonna come with that eraser. But touch, touch, touching up on on the Quadras fight, Quadras. I mean, uh, and Chocaldico. These guys are basically set, setting up, and they put they put them on the undercard of on purpose so they could uh, do the do the rematch maybe later in May or or sometime in the summer. But basically, the way I see it, I I, I think it's gonna be a more more of an easy fight for Quadras. For Chocotico, this this guy, uh, I forgot his name, but um, really hard to mention uh, to pronounce his name. But basically, this is a rugged guy, and I I I think that this is a real tough division for Chocotico. I honestly don't know how he's gonna do on the rematch with Quadras, but I I'll, I'll give Chocotico the decision, and I I will agree with you on Quadras getting the KO. But um, yeah. yeah, I mean the, the the Andy Lee fight is really being set up to make him look good to win, and yeah, obviously uni- people, unify Sam Patty, uh, Sam Patty. Because uh, th- this this is how the promoters, this is the promoter mindset. If Triple G beats uh, Danny Jacobs, and obviously the winner would fight Andy Lee, who has a WBO and would be on that undercard to fight Triple G, which would work on then make Triple G the undisputed middleweight champion, having the WA. WBA, WBC, IBF, and the WBO title. Basically taking every title. It's a title monopoly is what Triple G is about to do. If it's if it, if he is victorious and then obviously um uh Andy Lee is victorious as well, which I that's a gimme fight, but we'll see. Um that's what it looks like so far. Yeah. So um yeah, so basically the those are showcase all all, all the all the whole on the cards are showcase uh on the card, but you know, I got some good names there. You got Quadras, who gave uh, Chocaltigo, who is considered as most of the, for the pound for pound king, basically uh, uh, of this generation. And uh, Quadras and the other card just to set up that rematch and basically um, uh, and Lee to to, to uh, fight for his people for the the Irish the Irish man. Yeah, we so will we will be there at the Garden um, that Saturday, so we're gonna fly up to New York and have a good time. Probably get wasted. Irish wasted. I don't yeah, know. I I, I gotta be able to Irish. see the fight too. I'm gonna DVR it anyway, and then I'm gonna watch it and be like, oh okay. I mean, uh, you're probably gonna get come back for the next weekend, and, and it's probably gonna be free on HBO. So, I mean, we are paying uh, big money for this fight. So why buy? The yeah, it makes sense. Why? Well, yeah, it is gonna be well, HBO. You're right. Well, well, why, yeah. why? Why? Well, I'm still gonna DVR it. That doesn't make well, sense. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. It, it usually come out next week anyway. So. Yeah. So um, yeah, thanks. Thank you, guy, for being part of the show. Um, we're gonna be in New York for uh, this upcoming weekend. Can't wait. Uh, we're gonna be well with peeps over there. Back to to home. Back 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 home. We're going back to home. If you're in the tri-state area and you want to get our autograph, please let us know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll be at the Waldorf Astoria signing signing autographs to the first if, if five people that show up. <laughs> nah, nah, but uh, if y'all want to meet us and uh, you know, and, you know. Have a drink. I'll buy you a drink if you come in and, and, and check us out. Just okay. mention that you're a fan of the podcast. Yeah, you listen serious. to us. Um, y'all can hit up us on IG at Boxing Rampage, and or email. We don't us. have we don't have T-shirts yet, so we'll just uh, we we'll just hold like a cardboard like at the airport. <laughs> <laughs> we were on we're picking that. up Boxing Rampage at the airport. Is like <laughs> definitely. So um, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll definitely buy you a drink if if you contact me and tell me where are you at in the fight, and uh, we'll meet up and. Whatever, yeah, man. We uh, would be nice to meet you. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Always listening to to us, just babble and, and talk boxing. But um, yeah, it'll be really nice to to, to get to know you. So uh, just hit, hit us up, I'm and um, I can't wait to see you at the fight. I don't know. This is Till nice. next time. Is Out. And I don't, I don't want to kill him and all just destroy him. No, just boxing. Only boxing. Gennady really truly believes that this is a sport. This has got nothing to do with being angry. This has nothing to do with being uh, vindictive or vicious. Or he, When he steps through the ropes, uh, he becomes uh, Triple G. And when he steps through the ropes, he's out there to win, do everything possible to win 
uh, the way you're supposed to win. Yes, I think this part is top five for me as a hero.